So what's poppin' peons? It is your girl Sunshine, aka Just Dread, and I am here with another mother fluffin' video. Hold up, give me a moment. <gasps> so I am here with another mother fluffin' video, and you guys, I really want to kind of get in. Give me a moment. So what's so you guys welcome back to my channel um today i'm doing an episode of sunshine's bakery and if y'all don't know what we do your girl is getting thick because she's eating very well and if y'all have a problem with that and y'all want to fat shame me please do so in the comments but just know that i will not be putting up with that shit and i will and i don't give a fuck today say what you want to say do what you want to do baby i don't care get as disrespectful as you need to be Whatever, because I know I'm going to strike a nerve today. And when I strike this nerve, I'm giving y'all full permission to talk shit. But just know that just because I struck a nerve and you feel like you need to talk shit, and it's out of disrespect, just know that I'm sending that back. I'm sending that shit back to your ass. Dear Holy Spirit and Angel guys, I come to you humbly as I know how. And I ask that my ancestors and my spirit guides and my spirit team go and protect me. As I go on this video, because I will be completely honest, and well, not only will I be completely honest, but I ask that I do a return back to sender for all the energy. So, whether it's positive, negative, in between, I ask that the energy be returned back to the sender times 10. I ask that I ask that I ask that this message touch somebody now, and not only does it touch somebody, but it touches their heart. I say, thank you very much. And yes, I'm doing the prayer before I usually like probably want to pray on camera, but I feel like fuck it. I feel like it's my channel and that's what I want to do. So that's what I'm going to do today. So today's for Sunshine's Bakery. Um, I actually baked something. Um, I'm probably going to eat it off camera because I'm probably going to have to suck up the um, what's in my cup <laughs> a little bit later. Okay. Um, but what's in my cup is a very special mix. Um, it's a wine. And a vodka. I know, I know, I know. I, I, I realized it does not go together. Um, but that's what's in my cup. Um, and not only what's in my cup is what you call it, but I also have water here for if I need to hydrate. Um, so now that we got this out the way, I kind of want to get into what I do for Sunshine's Bakery. So for Sunshine's Bakery, I usually just get on here. I do whatever vice it is, whether it's baking, whether it's this, whether it's smoking, whether it's, whether it's drinking water, whether it's drinking tea, whether it is, what whatever it is, we come in, we have a conversation. Please don't come over here judging nobody's vice because I'm not going to sit there and judge yours. Whatever your vice is, whatever, if it's become addictive, go see, go to counseling, go seek help. I even want you to be an alcoholic, so I get it. It's hard to admit and you don't want to say it. Um, But let's just kind of go into the video so when i count to three whatever your advice is that's what you're gonna go do whatever you feel comfortable doing right now i don't feel comfortable drinking because my god it's not even five o'clock yet and your girl has been a drunk for the last couple of days trying to kind of process my feelings and now that i'm out of my feelings i'm ready so when i count to three i hope you've had time to roll up i hope you had time to do everything that you need to do because i no longer roll up not on camera anyway but you know your girl is gonna sit there and fuck with a, a good old a good old fashioned pen because why he no 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 all right so you guys um ready one two three And I'm going to take another one because I need to be as relaxed as possible for this topic because I'm going to be getting in my feelings about how I feel about my experiences as being a black woman. And just because you live a different life from me or you feel like this may not identify with you or you not there yet or whatever, please keep it respectful because I'm telling y'all right now, I'm being extremely vulnerable and I'm telling y'all, y'all let Danae curse y'all and y'all unborn children I'm sending all that energy back to y'all asses so watch what you say <laughs> so lately 
I've been having this dilemma as a black woman. And the dilemma that I've been facing is that I'm expected to be strong all the time. I am a neurodivergent bisexual black woman. And a lot of people in my inner circle, and not just in my inner circle, but people around me think that I'm strong because I'm really good at what I do. I take pride in my work, so I give, I usually give 120% of whatever I do. Like, even when I'm coming on here making lazy content, or like if it's in a bonnet or some shit like that, I make sure that my bonnet is at least, at least clean for you bitches, because I know some of y'all gonna be like, it's very ghetto of you to wear a bonnet online, it's very ghetto of you to wear a bonnet in public, and I'm telling y'all right now, bitch, I've been outside looking like a hoochie. I've been outside in some pajama pants. I've been outside in a bonnet. Yeah, I've been outside with um with half braids sometimes. And I'm telling y'all right now, I am not fucking depressed. When I am depressed, you bitches would never know because I put on a fucking brave front and a brave face. And because depression and anxiety looks different in black women, we often sit there and say, okay, well, she's depressed if she doesn't do this. No, bitch, I'm comfortable. I feel like as a black woman, we get so many respectability politics rules put on us that anytime that we step outside of those things and we need justice or any type of thing, people will constantly look at us and they judge us by our past and the shit that we do. But we're expected to show up for the black men in our community. We're expected to show up for our kids. We're expected to want to have kids. We're expected to do all the things that our mothers and our great-grandmothers did. And our great-grandmothers have taught us something totally different from what they have taught our the boys. The great-grandmothers have taught us that we need to be independent and have our our own shit because a man will use you and abuse you and yes they had to go through a bunch of men and sometimes the men they are that they're still with still use them and abuse them and are emotionally unavailable so they've had to settle for emotionally unavailable men and they say that yeah i love this person and yes this person is all these other things and x y and z and then when we get to the conversation part about it and we ask them why do you say they say oh because it's how it was supposed to be and i couldn't and i couldn't do this and i couldn't and i couldn't do x y and z I kind of started feeling this type of way once my grandmother's son had passed away. And even though she wasn't the perfect mother or all these other things, everybody blamed her and said that she was the cause for it. For me, myself, and I, I knew that the cycle of violence that they had created amongst themselves and with their amongst their sibling rivalry, because they, it's not the first time that they've shot at each other. It's not the first time that they fist fought each other. It's not the first time where they've been abrupt egregious to each other as men and the only difference between the men and the women in the family is with the men they have a, they have a stopping point so they don't have a problem hurting and harming the women in the family but they didn't have a problem but they had a problem when it came down to the brothers because they'd always apologize and make up for it once my uncle tried to unalive me i kind of knew that my position was no longer safe and guess what all that oh if she didn't do this and she didn't do that and if it no I literally had to face the fact that my uncles were violent men. I've I've been in relationships where men have pulled guns out on me because I wanted to break up because they were cheating or because I didn't want to be with them. I've had to deal with stalkers. I've had to deal with people saying, okay, well, you have an OnlyFans. Bitch, I have an OnlyFans. Not a fucking, what you call it. I believe that men have a consent problem and it's not just black men who have a consent problem i think it's people in general who have a consent problem because even some women have a consent problem them damn selves every single time i go out there like the whole like the whole sukiyana shit like i was having a conversation with somebody and i said i feel like why Cleo Cyrus should have got charged pressed against him and and all of a sudden he was like nah that's the that's the problem sukiyana's a whore sukiyana's a slut she does this and i said i don't give a fuck if sukiyana was popping pussy on a fucking rainbow bitch consent is fucking very much so important if i don't want something to happen to me i don't want something to happen to me i don't want a motherfucker to be in my fucking face and doing some shit and yes i believe that sex workers have a right to say some shit and yes your perception of a situation may be wrong bitch what if i put on this outfit because i like this outfit and you're over there saying oh i did this for you no bitch i just like the way my tits look and i want them bitches to be up and sometimes bitch sometimes i i'm telling you right now as someone who loves their body, as someone who loves what they do on OnlyFans, some of y'all have the audacity to subscribe to my account and then send random ass dick pics. And for me, myself, and I'm like, 
I didn't consent to that. And when I asked y'all about it, because you can't delete messages, y'all y'all want to unfollow me and come back a couple of months later. Like, y'all do know the messages still stay there. This is not like Instagram and Snapchat where you can delete it or have it on a 24-hour loop. Sometimes you need to see the shit that y'all say. Because when I say consent is sexy, people sit there and they laugh and they joke about it. But for me, myself, and I, bitch, I don't give a fuck what, you, what type of profession you do. Black, white, Hispanic, whatever. I don't give a fuck. If you consent is sexy, I would never want to be in a position where somebody thinks that they have total control of me and I gave them consent, whether it was verbally or non-verbally. Like, mind you, I was having sex with this one dude before I had my boyfriend. And we were making content together for OnlyFans. Why? Because why the fuck not? You know what I'm saying? Um, He had a problem with consent. I didn't want to have a child. He wanted. He's in his 30s. He wanted to have a child. And he had a problem with me not wanting to stick around while he played this game of limbo. Because our contract went from, all right, we're going to work together on this. So, okay, well, this is not working out and that's not working out because these things aren't really thriving like you say they are. So, fuck it. Let's just do OnlyFans because it's easier and you get a cut from anything that I do. So, anything that I do, you get a cut from whatever. And we negotiated a contract between us so we can go have that. This is the consent that I'm talking about. So when I was always, so if I was at his house, we were either practicing or recording or filming content that needed to be filmed. A lot of people sit there and say, okay, well, you're a whore and you're a slut and you did this and you did that and you were, you were raw dogging this person. You're right. I was raw dogging this person because me and this person had consent to raw dog. Me and this person had paperwork that lined up for us to do that. Me and this person had things that we had agreed to in private to do so. But because of the people who were on my OnlyFans and who were only curious to be on my OnlyFans, the first thing that they said out of their mouth was, oh, I don't have any respect for myself. I don't have any morals. I don't have any values. I just let anybody fuck on me. That is not true. I have a standard. And I think a lot of people think that because I don't have a standard or because I don't speak on my standard a lot or what I expect, even from my whores or my people or the people who I used to sleep with for fun, because cause, cause I'm telling y'all right now, I know purity culture is the thing that we say is going to get people, black women to be respected again, but fuck purity culture, bitch. Respect needs to be the thing for black women to be respected again. Because whether or not you agree with the decisions I make, y'all need you to respect me. I have no problem with hoteps. I have no problem with the overly Christian people. I have no problem with the free-spirited people. I have no problem with people who believe that, you know, what you call it. I'm just not going to fuck with you like that. And I don't, and I don't feel like dealing with you. For me, myself, and I, I... For me, myself, and I, I came to the conclusion that I don't want to be put in no mess with nobody. I don't like drama, and I damn sure as fuck did not want to sit there and fucking sit there and pretend to give a shit about bitches who like to fight all the time. A bitch that like to fight all the time, that's cool. I'm going to tell, I'm going to feel in my heart that you might need to go to therapy. But am I going to disrespect you and be like, oh yeah, bitch, this, this shit ghetto as fuck? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not going to be like, oh my gosh, you bitches is fighting again over a nigga. Because guess what? Because guess what? Because guess what? Bitch, I wanted to beat a bitch ass for her fucking, for fucking my man. But the only reason why I wanted to beat her ass is because she was my best fucking friend at the fucking time. And bitch, you knew. And you did this shit. And the disrespect did not come, the fact that I wanted to fight her did not come from the fact that she fucked my man. It came from the fact that she fucked my man and she thought that she that she did something when she did that. And how she felt like she just had to throw it in my face to try to hurt me. Ma'am, now I'm going to hurt you physically to show you that bitch that shit didn't really work. But bitch, I'm going to show you what real hurt looks like. And she said some personal shit that, that hit my fucking soft spot. So, yeah, that's the reason why I wanted to beat this bitch's ass. So, I will never so I will never go at a bitch who liked to fight. I'll never go at a bitch who was overly Christian because I used to be overly Christian, too. I used to be like, oh, it's a sin. No, bitch, I am a black, neurodivergent woman who is bisexual. And just because I'm practicing heteronormalcy by choosing monogamy and to be with this one person does not take away from the fact that I'm bisexual. A lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I fuck with you. That shit, that shit would be freaky. You and my girl, I'll be like, okay, then let me peg you. They'd be like, nah. I'd be like, okay, so they don't put me in scenarios where you feel like you would feel better because I would feel better to peg a man. It's, it's always been my dream goal to peg somebody. My partner, my partner's not going to let me peg him. But, um, I know somebody who will. 
and baby, I want to peg. I want, baby, I want to peg. So if I don't come out there, if I don't come out there and be like, oh my gosh, sir, you look so good. Like, let me peg you from behind. I don't expect you to be like, okay, whatever. And I don't give, I don't, and I don't care what your job position is. I don't care if you got an OnlyFans. I don't care if you want, I don't care if you work at Walmart. I don't care if you work at Target. Bitch, I don't even give a fuck if you work for fucking NASA or a respectable ass job. Um, don't fucking come up here disrespecting me just because of the position that you figured out or that you found out that I work in. And I feel like a lot of times when black women are saying this bothers us and because it comes down to black men, they try to make it a gender war thing. No, bitch, it's a fucking respect thing. I had, I had a problem. Me, myself, and I. I had a problem with the whole Suki shit because I felt like Sukiyana should never got disrespected. I personally don't give a fuck if the bitch made a song about how she was eating a nigga ass and they said she made a song about eating nigga ass. And I said, you know what, that's perfectly fine. But when she says, but, but, but when she says, you know what, like, look, I get that we here to talk about this, but like, let's not do that. I'm only this way in this area. And a lot of y'all fucking either put people as respectable or not respectable. And it's, and it's always the one thing that's what you call it. And then y'all never look at a person's accomplishments. As much as I'm the only fans person, I'm, I'm still a friend. I'm still somebody's sister. I ain't nobody mama because I don't want to be nobody mama. But I'm still somebody's girlfriend. I'm still somebody's lifelong partner. I'm still somebody's all of these things. And as much as y'all want to sit there and say like, okay, well, the people who fuck with you are dumb, stupid, and simps. No, bitch, you're the fucking problem. Because the people who know me and who fuck with me seriously, they have no problem with what I do. Some of them may not like what I do or agree with what I do, but they don't have a problem with me exercising my right to autonomy to do so. And I don't have a problem with them exercising their autonomy to do so. Like, I feel like everybody's going to grow. Everybody's going to change. Everybody's going to have some shit that they have, that they ha that they have to work through. But that's them having to work through that. And then when we go, when we go and we say, oh, as a black woman, you're ruining the community. You're doing this. You're doing that. I've run into more emotionally unavailable men in the black community than I have in any other community. And then they say, and then they say, oh, my job is just to provide and take care of. No, you have to be emotionally available. You know how hard it is to love somebody who won't even tap into their own emotions and when and when they get in their feelings, they want to shut down? As someone who's dated both inside and outside of my race, I can tell you right now, I never I as much as I've had as much as I've had a problem with white boys making me their fetish or non blacks making me their fetish and because I'm pretty and I have the personality and I have the sex appeal and I do all these things and I'm funny and I'm all these other things, they've they have no problem telling me exactly what it is. I've had that problem when it came down to black men more so than white men and yes some white men want to sit there and lie i'm not saying that it's a whole white black thing but i'm talking about my experience this is my lived experience and i need y'all to respect that as someone who's dated mostly black men who has who has assaulted them physically sexually in other types of ways and I still give y'all the benefit of the doubt and I still come back and I don't say that all black men are bad. I don't say that all black men are this. I simply say that I was hurt by this one. But if, but if somebody says that they were hurt by this one and they feel like this person's actions is X, Y, and Z, y'all sit there and y'all say, well, if you weren't doing this and you weren't doing that and you weren't doing this and you weren't doing that. No, I don't give a fuck what the hell I was doing. If I didn't disrespect you, like, in real time, it's something that's truly disrespectful, not something that you think is morally respectful or disrespectful, but if I have not disrespected you, like, in an actual way that disrespect was there, like, if I ain't call you no bitch nigga for no reason, if I ain't say, nigga, you did this, and this is this how this makes me feel, like, every time you hold, every time you hold, like, somebody accountable or there's consequences, it's always like, the justice system is not fair. They were really hard on Tory Lanez. Okay, and they should have been hard on fucking Tory Lanez. The justice system is not fucking fair. I try to stay out of jail. I really do. I try to, I try to, I try to stay out of positions that have put me locked up in an unfair system. So therefore, I'm not going to do fuck shit to go put me in a position where I have to be, where I have to go face the judge. Because guess what? Because guess what? I know, I know that I'm not, cock I'm not, I'm not of a caucus community. I'm not going to get a slap on the fucking wrist. 
I seen, I seen, I've seen what they've done to black women for trying to get their kids to get in a better school district. The woman just fucking sat there and lied about her location and she put, and she put the kids with somebody else so that, so that they can go to the school because the bus didn't go to the area that she was at and they get that bitch five years in prison. But, 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 I, but I've also seen cases where they've had women who did not look like me did not have any of the what you call this do the most heinous shit to children in daycares and schools and all they get is a tap on the wrist one woman literally hung a baby and literally got less than two years in jail and said that she could get get a chance to get off on parole like excuse me so before y'all sit there and say oh you always want to make it a race thing and no i don't I really genuinely don't. If I was getting treated equal like everybody else, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I found out I was getting the lowest pay and me and a bunch of people was getting, like the new hires was getting paid lower than everybody else. Everybody else should have been at a certain wage. Everybody should have been at either this wage or this wage or this wage or this wage. And a whole bunch of new hires who had signed contracts said we're supposed to get paid X, Y, and Z did not get paid what we were supposed to get paid. And then everybody was like, okay, well, I don't see what, no, you don't see what the big deal is because it's not affecting you. When Meg got shot, that hurt my feelings because everybody was like oh it just scratched her whatever they shot at her and just because you have a bad aim or you meant to miss on purpose does not take away from the fact that somebody tried to shot at a shoot at a black woman and to see the responses that some of y'all had like oh well if she wasn't such a hot girl and she wasn't such a this and she wasn't such a that she wasn't such a this she wasn't such a that and then y'all like oh well oh well she's coming to court how how do y'all want to come to court broken battered and bruised she came to court looking her best so 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 that she can get shit done she came to she came to court she came to work with whatever it is that she needed to do for her to be okay but if she would have came in there looking bummy and scummy and disgusted and broke y'all would have said she was looking for sympathy somebody needs to show sympathy somebody needs to show give a fuck about us because i'm sick and tired of everybody saying that oh you should be a strong black fucking woman what the fuck does that shit mean does that mean i'm supposed to sit there get taken advantage of get paid less get talked to any kind of way get disrespected all because i'm a black woman and because i'm strong and y'all know i can bounce back from this what if i don't want to bounce back from this what if what what if it hurt what if it hurt so bad huh what if what if, what if, what if, what if, what if my anxiety and depression look something totally different? You saying I just got a bad attitude. What if, what if I'm anxious? What if I'm nervous? Because, what if I'm nervous because, 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 because I got to be worried about what the fuck is going to happen. You know how many times I found myself on Pornhub because of, of scoring ex-lovers and people were high-fiving them and hyping them up. And because they were upset with me, they were telling people that, oh, this is the shit I did. But if I was to go out there and do a tell all of every nigga that I fucked and slept with and every nigga who I dated and all their little secrets, y'all would be calling me fucking trifling and wrong as fuck. But some but but some but somehow the men who have drugged me, abused me, put their hands on me, pulled guns out on me and done all these type of things, then it's just like, well if you were respectable, we would we would want to protect you. No. Protect me because protect me because you want to protect me because protect protect me because it's the right thing to do. Stop always enabling fucking abusers, and that's and that's the problem. When black women stand up, y'all call us combative and rude and ghetto and all a whole bunch of other shit. And I'm just like, look, I ain't trying to fight nobody. I ain't trying to be nobody mixed. I ain't even trying to do half that shit. I just want to live my life and have fun. Yes, I'm on OnlyFans because I enjoy showing my naked body. I love myself. It took me a while to get here, bitch. Just pudge, all this shit, all this shit y'all probably gonna talk shit about. Yeah, I like this shit. I like the fact that I'm not skinny no more. I like I like the fact that I've actually gained weight. I like the fact that I've actually grown. I like the fact that I know what consent looks like now. I'm so glad that I stand up for myself now. I'm glad for a lot of motherfucking things. And because I am proud of who I am. And I don't have a problem telling you, bitch. I will call corporate. Will call corporate. I will call corporate in a minute. Find somebody else to play with. I'll call corporate. I don't have a problem sending that ass to jail. I don't have a problem sending nothing for myself. I literally have a disclaimer on my OnlyFans that if my content ever gets leaked and whoever fucking leaks it, oh yeah, I'm pressing motherfucking charges. 
I'm pressing charges. I'm pressing charges. I got all my shit taken down off of Pornhub, well, most of it, because I show enough, put a report in there, and I show enough, let enough, you better take it down and you better delete it. I'm telling you right now, because I will have the police at your motherfucking door. Oh, you don't know I said, bitch, I know your first and last name and the fact that you put this shit on there, I will, I will sue, I will sue the fuck out of Pornhub and everybody else. And not only will I do that shit, but I'm going to stand up for me. I love my man. I love my life. I love the shit that I got going on. And I refuse to be living life as a strong black woman. That's why I gave that truck up so long ago. Because being a strong black woman is tedious. It's exhausting and I don't have it in me. Oh, as a strong black woman, as a strong black No, fuck that shit. I'm not a strong black woman. I'm a human first. I'm a black woman, but I'm a human first. So I have emotions. I have feelings. I have things that I want to do in my life. I have places that I want to go in my life. I know exactly who I want to be and how I want to move in life. And I cannot do that as a strong black woman. So I so I dropped the trope. Don't care. I drop it. I don't want to hear it. Oh, as a, as a woman, I hate hearing that shit because I don't tell y'all how to be as a man. And I've had great father figures in my life. And please don't get it twisted because my biological father wasn't there. Other niggas have stepped up. Other men have stepped up. And not only have they stepped up, but they showed, but they showed out and they showed better to the way oh, where I literally almost forgot that me and my biological father don't get along. And I've had great experiences with that. They taught me some shit I'll never probably forget in my life. And guess what? And guess what? Guess what? They don't look at me how the world looks at me. I told one of my father figures that I was going to go back on OnlyFans. He said, why? I said, because I like it. He was like, you ain't doing it because of the money, is you? I was like, nah, because I genuinely like it. And I was like, the money is a plus, but I genuinely like it because, you know, X, Y, and Z. And he said, okay, then fine. He, say, he said, why are you telling me that? And I was like, because, you know, they going to say that you're going to be disappointed in me. He was like, nigga, I don't give a fuck what you do. As long as you happy and you safe out here and you living your life and you doing the shit that you need to get done and you and you making and you making a stride. And he was like, he's like, because life going life. And life gonna hit you hard. But as long as you're doing your shit and you doing all your other stuff, because it don't matter if you a good woman, a bad woman, or what you call it, life gonna hit you when everybody working gotta get paid. And I was like, well, and he was like, look. And he told me, like, one of my father figures used to be a terrible person. And now he's in his 60s and all that shit that he done did done caught up to his ass. And now he's like, you know what? I think I'm gonna just live right. I've had I've had father figures who did great in life and they did and they got great shit. So now, so now, so now they live in life peacefully in their forties and thirties and they ain't really pressed about no real shit. You know what I'm saying? Well well when they was in their thirties. But you know what I'm saying? But they ain't really pressed by no real ass shit. They not they not they not they not really stressed cause they ain't they and they taught me some shit. Like, trust me, the reason why I feel like I deserve to be treated like a pretty pretty princess is because I've seen the men treat their partners like pretty pretty princess even if they was just fuck buddies i've seen i've seen i've seen i've seen them get married i've seen them take care of a whole household in today's times okay and i'm talking about the retired ones too i'm talking about literally like my grandparents and aunties if they didn't want to work they did not have to work i think my auntie took a whole year off after she had her baby she took a whole year off and came back and her husband paid the bills and made sure everything was done. And guess what? I know you're like, oh, they're probably submissive women. No, the fuck they're not. My mom is not submissive. My grandma is not submissive. And these women are strong women who stand on their shit. And what I mean by strong, women, like, they're very strong in their character. Like, they know who they are. They know what they're going to accept. They know what they can't accept. They know what they can't. They know what they will and know that they want. And yes, some of their ideas are ideologies are fucked up like some minds are or whatever. However, it's all about perspective. However, these women still have men that would do for them if they needed to. So for you, so for when some men say, "Oh, being emotionally available is simp behavior," no, it's not. I don't see it as simp behavior. 
being, 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 oh, you being a slut is going to be a problem. No, it's not. You having a past is going to be a problem. My grandma was a crackhead. Okay, strong crackhead. Like, you got a dollar, I'll suck your dick for some crack. Like, crackhead, crackhead. Not like, oh, it was a cute little phase that she went through and then she got over it because she got better. And not only did she get better, but she know. Like, my grandma was like, literally on the street, I'll suck your dick for some money. Crackhead. And my grandfather still respects her to this day. My grandfather don't bring that shit up. And the people around her don't bring that shit up. And the only reason why I brought it up here is to show you that it doesn't matter about your motherfucking past. I don't give a fuck what you did as long as you ain't fundling no children or you ain't you know kill a motherfucker for no fucking reason or no shit like that or whatever bitch we cool and and bitch and if you do got that murder charge bitch um you don't have to keep it 10 feet away when your ass get upset ho because um i don't really know what they expect from you but that's just but that's just me being safe and it's not me discriminating but bitch you know choices um tell y'all right now it's easy to set up somebody to get robbed and killed. Why? Because I've had opportunities to do so. Have I done it? No. Because I was like, bitch, even though orange is a beautiful color on me, I don't I don't want to be in nobody's orange jumps, jump, orange jumpsuit talking about some. I just got so upset. I just couldn't keep it in. I just had to stop. I just had to stop. No, bitch, I'll send your ass to jail. The fuck, I, the, the, the fuck I look like risking my freedom. I ain't finna take your life. I'm finna send your ass to jail. And I'll press charges and all this other stuff. And I know y'all like, oh, oh, you ain't no real woman. You ain't no real woman. Why? Because I don't want to have kids. Why? Because I'm bisexual. Why? Because I choose autonomy. Why? Because I know exactly what I want and how I want to be treated. Why? Because I know I have all these other things. Oh, yeah, as a woman, you're supposed to submit. I don't have to submit to a goddamn thing if I don't want to. I always say that consent is sexy because it truly is. Like, this is why I love my boyfriend to, this, to death. I genuinely love my partner to death because, not because I want to, but because he allows me to feel safe. Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, he must have a shit ton of money. Nah, he ain't got the most money I've ever dated. But for me, that's not important to me anymore. I remember when I used to be young and dumb, I used to be like, I call it young and dumb, but I used to be like so money driven that I would have did anything for money. Well, not anything because I had boundaries and limits and shit, but I, but I wasn't opposed to doing certain things for money. Bitch, now I'm going to tell you exactly what my standards are and what I got. And if it's not good enough for you, goodbye. I literally, I literally sell, I literally sell custom content packages for like 150 to 120, between 150 and for the month. And they get all my exclusive content. And they get to FaceTime me at least twice a month. And we get to do whatever it is that they want to do virtual via FaceTime. And that's that, that's what works for me. And I don't have a problem doing that because I enjoy it. And guess what? My partner is securing himself to where he knows that, look, I enjoy being a little slut dragon. I'm going to do this shit. You know what I mean? I'm 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 gonna do it. I'm 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 gonna step up. I'm gonna do it. I mean, you know, I'm a and my partner fucks with me. My partner sees me as the emotional being that I am. My partner see me cry. My partner see me not be okay. My partner see me freak out. My partner see me be sane. My partner see me be all types of things. And my partner still fucks with me. And even though, because like me and my partner had a discussion about the lgbt community and because i'm a part of it some shit happened and he asked me how did i feel about a certain thing and i said i feel like when it comes down to this i feel like i'm 50 50 because of x y and z my partner had a totally different stance and you would think that because i was part of the community that i would condone everything that they say and i said i see this i said i'm looking at it from this perspective because it's predatory when straight people do it and it's predatory when gay people do it and it doesn't matter if you change the sexuality of something if something's predatory it's gonna be predatory and i said i feel like xyz is predatory especially in the community when it comes down to the mm. and i said I feel like this because if you know that this person is not a part of the community and you actively pursue them and they're telling you no no thank you and you keep on going and then you can then you call them a homophobe I feel like that's problematic and my partner said well I feel like and I said well I feel like it's still predatory because whether because I'm because I'm because it's because it's one thing to not know if somebody's in the closet or not but to try to nudge your way in there that's predatory because yes and no like whether they ready or not to admit it baby that's not your job to do 
And a no means no. And consent is consent. And I said it's predatory when older um, people in the community go for the younger people in the community and they try to use it as a guide to guide them into some. No, stop, stop praying on, stop praying on the youngins. You know what I'm saying? And this goes for straight, gay, bisexual, trans, non-trans, whatever the fuck you identify as. Don't pray on people who you know don't know as much as you. That's like, that's like me. I'm on OnlyFans. I know I know how much OnlyFans take out. I know how much all of this shit take out. I know about the taxes. I know about this. I know about I know about the shit because I've been on OnlyFans for a minute. If somebody was to come on and say, "Oh my gosh, you oh you make it look easy," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, man, it's super duper easy, man." Even if you don't got a job, man, you gonna blow up overnight, bitch. I'd be sitting there lying to these bitches, and then guess what? I would be dead as wrong. And not only would I be dead as wrong, but I'd be sitting. I'd be a liar, cause that's not the truth. It is not easy. You have to you have to make sure your content is not out there. You have to constantly do this shit. You need a team. You need all you need a bunch of shit. And if you don't have that, you're gonna be doing that shit for yourself for a minute. Cause I'm still doing that shit for myself for a minute. I've learned from some of the greatest when I used to be a sugar baby on how to maneuver in it as a black woman versus a white woman. Because I'm telling y'all right now, it's a difference. Yeah, I can sit there and say it's not, but as somebody who is in that community, it very much is so. Because you have to fight against the stereotype of being ghetto ignorant and what you call them you have to make sure that somebody's not trying to finesse you or play you because they think that you're less than y'all as much as as much as i was a shit baby i could tell y'all right now i didn't have sex unless i wanted to and guess what and guess what i charged i i text extra for that for 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 any service that was not a part of my what you call it and i was high priced so guess what so guess what i probably had like what five six of them and um yeah it's nice i used to i used to i used to be like hey i need x y and z and i would get it why because i put it in my because i put it as one of my requirements i I went on a date with one dude and this one dude he was like oh well you know you have to do this and i was like nah oh boy sent me back home and came back to me and i said and I, my stance is still the same i'm not doing i'm not doing paper me um, you want to spoil me, you don't have to show me that you want to spoil me. And if I feel like, and if I feel like popping my boom boom, that's what the fuck I shall do. But I will not be doing something that I don't feel comfortable doing. And I feel like as a black woman, when you say these things like, yes, I did this. Yes, I did that. Yes, I did this. And I still expect to be treated with respect. People get up and up in arms and about you. And they like, oh, well, oh, well, you're a sex worker and you're this and you're that and you're this and you're that. And you don't have a respectable job. You don't want to have kids. You don't want to. Okay, so what? I don't want to have kids. That doesn't make me a terrible woman. So what? So what? So what? So what? I don't want to have kids. It doesn't make me a terrible person. So what? So what? I don't want to fight. So what? I say period. So what? So what? I So what? I fuck with the city girls. So what? Y'all fuck with fucking future and other problematic ass niggas who don't have a problem saying shit. Future had a song where he said something like, once I fuck you, part of my collection. And I was like, nigga, no. Yeah, yeah, we had an experience, but I'm not a part of your collection. And no, you cannot hit it again if you wanted to. It'll have to be consent between both of us. And niggas used to sing that shit loud as fuck. Once I fuck you, part of my collection. And niggas was running around singing collections and shit. So guess what? I don't mind. I don't give a fuck about a city girl, a city boy. I don't give a fuck about the gays, the straights, the trans. Bitch, be who the fuck you are. But as a black woman who practices autonomy, I have to deal with all of this shit. And out of all the shit I said, somebody gonna still say, well, you bitches don't deserve respect, and your grandma with this, and your grandma that, and you supposed to cook and clean. Nah, I'm tired of being a strong black woman. I'm choosing autonomy, and um, honestly, if it makes life harder for me for choosing, what you call it, I'd rather choose the hard that's it's hard because I chose autonomy versus it's hard because I'm not choosing who to be, who I want to be. And while I'm sitting here respecting these respect, practicing these respectability politics or whatever it is that a motherfucker said that I needed for me to be okay and sane in the, in the world, I'm just sitting there like, okay, well, as long as I'm sane, as long as I'm good, as long as I'm straight, as long as I'm all in, no. Bitch, I don't give a fuck if you was on crack, was a hoe, was a slut, did whatever the fuck you wanted to do. If you have somebody in your life that fucking fucks with you and loves you, you still deserve to be treated like a motherfucking princess. As long as you ain't doing that shit now and hurting nobody, I feel like, fuck it. I feel like, fuck your past. 
as long as you ain't do not no heinous shit like kill a motherfucker, do you know some shit to harm children, I don't give a fuck what the fuck you did. And even if you did do that shit, I'm looking at you side eye and shit like that. But you, but I'm telling you right now, I'm having my guard up. But I'm not expecting you to want to be around me if I feel some type of way about you. I'm not expecting you, if I was to come out here and was like, oh, the straights are just so terrible. The straights do so, practice so much. And I could really go in on y'all. But I'm not going to go on y'all on the intellectual level. Because y'all could easily go in on the gay community and on the intellectual level. But y'all don't never do that because y'all never fact check y'all shit. And y'all don't know how to do proper research. But, as I digress. <laughs> I just feel like it's easy to tear down on somebody. And it's easy to say that as a woman, you should be doing this. And it's easy to say as a man, you should be doing this. But unless you got examples of positive love and shit around you and you've seen the both sides of it, I really don't give a fuck what you have to say. And being a strong black woman is not some shit that I want to fucking be in this lifetime. Like, a lot of people say, like, being a strong black woman is just so easy. You just gotta, you just know, fuck being strong, bitch. I'm gonna be a black woman in this world. I'm gonna have to go against the societal factors and the shits and all the shit that's against me. And guess what? I'm gonna live. I'm gonna be fucking happy. I don't want to be a Christian woman. One girl, she don't match with me because I, because, because she, because, because I seen it in her bio. She was like, "Oh, I want, I want, I want sober friends around me." Oh yeah, and then she asked me a question. She was like, she was like, "Oh, she was like, do you feel like you have to smoke?" I said, "No, I don't feel like I have to smoke. But if I want to smoke, that's what I'm gonna do. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it around you because clearly that's not what you went to." But I don't, I don't really do like the whole Christian let's go to church thing and try to convert me. And once I said, once I said, don't try to convert me over it, a bitch got mad and she was like, I don't want to be your friend no more. And I just thought to myself, like, that's fine. We don't have to, we don't have to connect. Like, I don't have a problem with the type of black woman that you want to be, but don't get a problem. Don't get upset when I'm not the type of black woman that you want to be. And then, and then feel some type of way because I'm, because I don't feel like changing my ways. I'm not asking you to change your ways. I'm just asking you to respect me enough to not try to fucking convert me over. Because yes, I've been in the church. I've experienced the church hurt. I've experienced the church highs and the lows. And I've made a decision that I don't want to be considered a Christian. I want to practice spirituality. And yes, and yes, and yes, and yes, I'm looking into spirituality and how it connects back to the Bible because honestly I found somebody who I listen to. Shout out to Christian A. Smith. You know what I mean? I think his name. I think I think I think it's I think it's him. Um I think I'm gonna clip this part of the video. But if you're deconstructing your Christian faith and you need something to like kind of um because I ain't nobody church member, I ain't nobody saint. I'm gonna just give it a buck. But Christian Smith or Christian A. Smith, I believe that's his name. Um, he really does make content that really touches the soul. Not only does it touch the soul, but it kind of like puts you in a position like, okay, this is nice. Because he talks about it while he often deconstructs the shit that I wanted to deconstruct, deconstruct when I was in the church. Like, I wanted to talk about, like, how was yoga demonic? What made yoga demonic? You know what I'm saying? What made all these things, what you call it? And then when I wanted to have, they was like, oh, you can't question God. And I was, was like, why can't I question God? They was like, oh, you're supposed to lead away. I'm like, why well, am I supposed to just lead away? Like, why do I need to be led astray? And once I seen, like, how they were treating people in my community, like the LGBT community, because I didn't come out into, like, my 20s. Okay? Like, early 20s. But I knew when I was, like, 16, 17. Because I realized, like, okay, like okay, you like girls. And I was like, nah, you don't like girls. You like boys. And for a long time, I didn't date. And I was just like, nah, I'm not into it. I'm not into it. I'm not into it. And when I did find myself like a man, it would be like, uh, well, I like her. You know what I'm saying? It was like, maybe I'm just a freak. You know what I mean? And when people, and when people sit there and say shit like, as a black woman, that homosexuality is just white wrapped up thing, I was like, do you not think that, like, sometimes it makes me want to sit back and think to myself, like, do they think that I chose to be bisexual? Like, being 16, like, it's a lot of shit I would have rather not been, okay? I would have rather been the church going, 
no, I'm not a freak of the week. No, no, no. You should be modest and covered. No, I like dressing like this. I like dressing like Uji. I like having my tummy out. I like the weight I gained. I like I like my big ass forehead. I like the way I look, finally. Um, just a lot of shit. And it took me a long time to get here and I'll be damned if I gotta be around people who just stay one minded. Cause I get it. That's where you're at in life and that's what you want. And you may you may stay there forever. But I ain't trying to be that forever. I ain't trying to be in a, I love you too, honey bunny, type shit. I ain't trying to be on a, I know, but you know, the differences. <laughs> my grandmother told me I was not good enough to go. My grandma said I wasn't good enough for God. And I know people say like, oh, you should let that shit go, but that shit hurt. Because in all my grandmother's failings that I've seen her do, from when she let a man beat on her, from when she let a man crack a beer bottle across her head, from when she did a whole bunch of shit, I never judged my grandmother. My grandmother, I told my grandmother about this dude I was there when he gave me these STDs, and my grandma made me tell him the whole family. And she was like, and she was like, oh, I'm, well, I'm gonna tell the whole family because you need to know, because you need to be shamed into doing better. And I was like, I fell in love with a man. This man cheated on me. Several times. Gave me STDs and he knew about it. He didn't tell me. But somehow this is my problem because I should have known better. I couldn't prepare myself for the humiliation that I felt. Having to sit there and tell my family. That somehow, because I was in love with somebody who I had been with for three and a half years, that what you call it? Because if she, because if I didn't tell him, she was gonna tell him. That's what she told me. And right to tell me that I was not good enough for God, baby. If heaven and hell is real, a lot of y'all Christian folks and people who are over religious will find yourself in hell, and y'all won't know the difference between heaven and hell. Because the way that y'all live y'all life is indicative of hell written behaviors and the shit that y'all want to condemn like people drinking and smoking and yes people can abuse these things like people can abuse their religious power and people can abuse their pretty privilege and people can abuse their plus because people because if you give anybody any type of power big or small if they feel like they want to abuse it they're going to abuse it right people have no problems abusing things people's time shit like that so the pattern of abuse is easy to fix it's, it's i mean it's easy to partake partake in so if y'all want to sit there and say oh because you smoke you're gonna go to hell oh because you drink you're gonna go to hell oh because you had sex you're gonna go to hell oh because you did this you're not good enough for god a lot of y'all won't be good enough for god if god was to literally come back and be like really this the shit you was teaching this the shit that you was on god will literally look at y'all and be like please do not fuck with these people because they do not speak for me and I know that I know that's gonna rub a lot of y'all wrong because you're gonna like, in the Bible it says in the Bible it says. But did y'all know that was an original Bible where they took out shit and when they re when they rewrote the Bible they took out certain things and they rewarded certain things. And if you go to the original Bible and to the what you call it and you compare the old text to the original text versus versus translated and untranslated, you will see the total difference in what was being said. And some of that shit was just used as storytelling to get a point to dictate across but a lot of y'all wouldn't realize that because a lot of y'all really take it to the heart and this is and this is not to take a dig at religion because i know a lot of y'all can really have that spiritual I'm like oh that shit really doesn't work because but no when life is life and whether you believe in allah jesus spirituality he she they them zebras or whatever life is gonna happen and you're gonna you're gonna have ups and downs like your life is not gonna be one big fairy tale where everything is fucking perfect and when you break these things down and you and you make your whole personality about a book that has been changed and dipped around and on and you have no compassion and empathy and because it says it in the bible and you can say in jesus name that it's okay to do so just because just because the redeemed have the power to say so does not mean that they have the power because you can be redeemed let the redeemed of the say let let the let the redeemed it's it's a passage in the bible that goes this like let the redeemed say so meaning that you have power of life and death in your tongue 
So whatever power you choose to be, whatever type of God you choose to be, when you're giving out curses, I feel like, or blessings, is what, so what you're going to get back in return. Because Danaya literally, Danaya Jackson literally did a curse. And she was like, may you're such and such. I was like, girl, go to fucking therapy. The man is cheated on. You have been abused and you have been neglected. Please go to fucking therapy. Stop having babies with this man. Stop doing some other shit. Cause I listen. Cause I listen to the interview, right? I listen to the interview with Tanya TKO, and I and I and I listen to Tanya TKO. Sometimes, sometimes she can be long winded, but she has a very good point. And her point that she was kind of making was like, you know, some shit. And it's some shit she ain't even pick up on. I was like, Danaya Jackson was abused sexually it was a lot of shit and she was with somebody who felt uncomfortable who was not you know what you call to do it and he used it for clout and she said oh i use the power of god to dictate to me i don't feel bad about my curse because i because i could go say this it's somewhere in the bible bitch i don't give a fuck if it's in the bible or not they make cases for polygamy in the bible they make cases for monogamy in the bible they make they make cases for abuse they make cases for not killing so either way it goes anything anything that you're trying to look for can be found in the bible majority if y'all know how to read your bible and honestly translate and understand and i was like this woman was mad at the world because they seen her marriage and she literally said she didn't have a problem with it until the money got funny so now that the money done got funny and now you gotta go out there and hustle again now you playing victim but she was the same person that said that she was just gonna up and leave and take these man kids. And baby girl, if you was gonna up and leave and take the man kids, you should have said, hey, look, X, Y, and Z had a conversation about it. Instead of trying to manipulate and emotionally, what you call it? Because I know people who pull on heartstrings. And yes, Derek Jackson was a cheater and he was a liar and he was all these other things. But she sat there and but she sat there in that shit. I can tell y'all right now, when you send this shit and the shit and the shit started to stink and you you wanna get up and leave when it's too fucking late, it's it's a problem. Because I'm telling y'all right now, as much as I hated that man for giving me them STDs, I had to realize, like, shorty, oh, boy, she's on you not once, not twice, not three times, so multiple times. And you were sitting there saying, okay, well, as long as he don't bring nothing back home, as long as he don't bring nothing back home, as long like, my self-esteem was in the shitter. I can say that shit. But guess what? Self-esteem in the shitter, not having a, not having a confidence and shit like that. I had to take accountability for my shit, and I said, you know what? Them girls ain't do nothing wrong. My partner did, and I accepted it, and that's my that's for me having low self-esteem. And for me having low self-esteem, it ended up giving me X, Y, and Z. So now, so now I don't, I don't do all that cheating shit. I don't do all that. Oh, I, oh, I got an STD shit. Cause bitch, if I ain't burning, and I ain't itching, and my shit come back clean, and your shit come back dirty. I'm not the problem, but I'm gonna leave you there and I'm gonna let you stay there. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna let you stay there. I'm gonna let you sit there and I'm gonna let you live in that shit. Why? Because it's not my job to fix you. It's not my job to try to control the narrative and it's not my job to try to do anything else. But as a black woman, I want to be at peace. Not just from the criticism of the world, but from the criticism of my own community because I don't want to do certain things. Some things I just think are beneath me. Fighting over a man, beneath me. Fighting over a friendship that don't want to be kept, beneath me. You know, doing certain things. Like, and you just because you're not there doesn't mean I'm judging you. It just means I'm, I've grown past that shit. I don't, I don't feel like fighting no more. I don't feel like... I don't feel like having to be all these things. And I don't want to be strong. I just want to be a human being. Like, I want to be seen as the person that quit my job because I was underpaid and being disrespected and some grown men tried to fight me. And now I want to be seen as someone who has the ability and the skill sets to go do what I need to go do. Because I'm great at what the fuck I do. Any job I go to, I always succeed. I always stand out. I always, I'm always the one that's asked to stay because I know exactly what I'm doing and I, and I learn fast. So, finding a job, yeah, it may be a little tough, but fuck it. I want to be seen not as the black girl who's ghetto or promiscuous because she has the only fans and she talks like country and she says period and she loves the city girls and shit like that because bitch i love a good city girl what i fuck with jt real bitches fuck with me <laughs> but i but i but i but i also but i also love her ain't it fun ain't it fun ain't it fun ain't it fun
fun. Yeah, you feel me? I love all of that shit. Like, I love country music. I love, I love rock music, bitch. Especially from the black girlies. Fuck it up. Cinnamon. What? I think that, I think, I think, I think that's her rock name. She's like, I'm taking my gold back. Yeah. Her, bitch, yes. But I don't want to be judged as a black woman based off what I do and how I, what you call it. I want to be judged off the shit that I produce in this world. Off the vibes that I give off in this world. Because a lot of people say, oh, we're going to go off vibes and shit like that. But, bitch, I'm sorry, but y'all always can't fuck with me when it comes down to, like, being a true friend. Because... I don't, I don't experience the best and the worst. And, bitch, now the person who I am today is fucking untouchable. Like, bitch, you can't touch me. Even if you wanted to, you can't touch me. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't touch me. You can't touch me. Yeah, yeah, you can't touch me. You tell me your hoes probably can, but a lot of y'all hoes can't. Because <laughs> I don't have a problem telling my friend I don't like some shit they did. I don't have a problem placing boundaries. I don't have a problem with my autonomy. This is this is this is why when I see shit like what they say, oh Sukiana is a whore and a slut, I'm like, is she really or is people just disrespectful as fuck? And because and even if she was, why didn't she deserve the respect? Silence, cause a lot of y'all gonna be like, okay, cool, cause 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 ir cause regardless of how you feel about somebody, consent should be what you call it abuse is abuse whether 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 you feel like they deserved it whether you feel like if they was a, no baby if something's wrong something's wrong and then when somebody holds you accountable you don't you don't get to bring up somebody's oh what they used to do if you didn't hold them accountable back then don't try to hold them accountable back now because who the person who they are now and versus the person who they were back then are two different people and yes you can bring that up and i'm telling y'all right now when people bring up my past like oh you used to do this okay and your point is how does how does what how does this compare to this? So because I did this back in the day, and when I and when and when I and when I say how I was penalized for my shit, and I say okay now moving forward and next to that, you did X Y Z today. It does not take away from the fact that you did me wrong. It does not take away from the fact that you did me dirty. So so Meg getting shot in the fucking foot, terrible. Sukiana getting sexually assaulted, terrible. Um what else? Um, men putting their hands on bitches, bitches fighting for no fucking reason. Terrible. It's some shit. I don't give a fuck. Man, woman, same sex, different. What? I don't, I don't like that fighting shit. And I used to fight. I got held accountable at every single step I fought at. So when I beat that bitch ass for her talking shit, I got held accountable for that shit. Guess what? I got suspended. And guess what? Motherfuckers looked at me and my reputation suffered. Okay. Looking back at it now, bitch, I'm like, man, I was fighting over, I was fighting a bitch because she ain't like me. Oh, I don't, they don't like me. Oh, I think they like me. That's a, oh, I think they like me when I hit them with another one. So it's only right that I hit you with another one. Yeah, I know you bitches don't like me. And it's okay, Pook. Because as much as you feel this type of way, baby, I want you to feel. I want you to, I want you to be honest with yourself. But be for real with yourself. Just because you're unhappy with the life that you're chosen and you feel like you've done everything right and somebody else who's not living like you is living and getting the best of the best, baby girl, fuck you. Sir, fuck you. Because the same people who are, who the same people who have a problem with me, same people who have a problem with me practicing autonomy have, are the same people who want to see me naked. The same people who, if I would have asked for help, would jump up and offer to help to go pay my shit the same people who want to kick it with me but because they have to put on this front for the world they have to put on this whole you're disgusting and i go and fuck with you but baby i don't know the same people who sit there and talk shit about me are the same people who i've helped financially mentally spiritually in all other fucking ways and and they ain't gonna say it out loud but baby if i needed anything anything and they had it oh oh i'm oh i'm getting it first quarter because when people, because the same people who have a problem with me being on OnlyFans and all the other shit I do are the same people who say that I'm fucking amazing and I'm great. So as amazing as the great as I am, because I do certain things, people try to shit on me in public and in private be needing me. So before y'all come up here talking about all respectability politics, some of y'all favorites and some of y'all faves. Or some of the people who y'all listen to or who y'all take 
shitty advice from all the same people who are fucking miserable because they're not living their true authentic selves. And me living my true authentic self brings a hole in their soul. Because I'm not sitting here pretending to be something that I'm not. And I'm not pretending to be holier than now or pretending and pretending like I've never made a mistake. Bitch, I fucked up some shit. And I've done great at some shit. But one thing that I will not be is feeling sorry for myself. Especially not for no lame ass losers. Can't. Won't do it. Don't have it in me. So, this is just me pouring out my heart and how I feel as a black woman. Especially navigating in today's society. <laughs> Um, whether you like me cause, whether you don't like me cause I smoke, whether you feel like I don't do ladylike enough shit, whether you, whatever it is, babe, go fight that own, go fight your own personal demon. Cause sis, I'm not finna put up with it. No, I'm not finna convert you or try to change me, but I will remember that shit. And when you need my help, goodbye. Anyways, you guys, that's it. That's the episode and your girl is done. Um, that was a lot, so I'm gonna go take, uh, two hits to get up out of this bitch, and we're skadoodles. Um, if y'all wanna know what type of pens I buy, um, I can't tell y'all, cause y'all like to sell out, y'all like to sell out of bitch shit. I'm not gonna hold you. <laughs> Every time I tell somebody where I get my shit from, bitch, I go back to the price be skyrocketed, cause bitch, the demand be high. <laughs> cause I get so... <laughs> I feel so much lighter now. I do. It just feels good to get it off your chest. You know what I'm saying? Like, huh, huh, huh. Let the niggas know. You know what I mean? Got your little scoop out. Your shit. People don't call me fat. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Because I enjoy it. I, I love me. I love me some me, bitch. Self love is the best love. And if you're trying to figure out how you're going to be in love with yourself, if you want to figure out how to get better love from others around you, start loving yourself. Start, start cutting the shit off that you don't like in your life. Start working on yourself. Go to therapy if you have to. Um, go, if you can't afford therapy, call a crisis hotline. They got they got it for the free, free, you know what I'm saying? You could go text a bitch, because that's what the fuck I do. <laughs> when I got it for my therapist, bitch, I text. I have, I have, I have my own crisis ther hotline or whatever I text. I'd be like, hey, I'm having an anxiety attack. Um, <laughs> yeah, and when we get, and we get a movement, and we get a pop from there. But yeah, um, because sometimes the words just don't come out. But love yourself so that you can get better love all around you. Because I'm telling you right now, it wasn't until I started loving myself that I got better love all around me. And I can say this because it's true. I genuinely enjoy. Oh my gosh, they're playing an interrogation and me and my boyfriend's supposed to be watching together. Ah, I gotta rewind that bitch all the way back. <laughs> okay. But no, like, but like on some serious shit though, like self-love is the best love. And if you practice self-love, I promise you, it'd be a lot better. Because even though I feel these things as a black woman, I really understand that. And I love me some me. And a lot of y'all don't love yourselves. And if y'all do, y'all don't love yourself properly or enough. So why would I get mad at somebody who doesn't even practice self-love or, or acceptance? But I do get frustrated. And sometimes it's okay to, you know, let out your frustrations. And I get it. Some people say it's a double standard. It's a double standard. But you know what? I, but you know what? I've never heard from somebody who's really doing who's really doing the work. The double standard does exist in both in both things because there's certain things that women can do that men can't do, and there's certain things that men can do that women cannot do socially acceptable. And to be completely and utterly honest, baby, I don't give a fuck what you do. As long as you ain't fucking with my pieces, my fucking money, baby, do what you want to do. But the moment you come up here trying to fuck up my piece on, on, some, on some bullshit that you got because you ain't do the work, baby, get the fuck out of my face. Go practice self-love. Because, you know, what I'm going to tell you when you do that shit, I'm like, baby girl, have you taken yourself out recently? Have you done something for yourself recently? And if not, baby girl, they are cheap and they are cheap and um, shilla shit, free shit that you can do. And if you ain't got the money right now, baby girl, they got Tubi. Go get up there go find you some shit that you like go figure it out they got they got illegal movie websites that you can go to baby do whatever you need to do for you to go find you some peace but get the fuck up out my face because one thing i'm not as a strong black woman i am a black neurodivergent 
black woman who's bisexual and knows herself and loves herself enough to tell y'all bitches that if you don't love yourself, ain't nobody gonna ever love you no matter how much you try. Because it'll never be enough because you, cause you, cause you don't know what loving you looks like. And it might not be the type of love that you want. And that's just a T. Anyways, I've said a lot. I hope the message is very clear. I should have preheated this shit. But I'm not a strong black woman. I'm just a black woman who has feelings and emotions. And I like what I like. And I ain't judging your vice. But do the work and love yourself first so that you can be loved by others. And this goes for black, white, Hispanic, man, woman, she, they, them, he, trans, cis, head, whatever. Do the work so that you ain't out there projecting. Because when I hear you hotel niggas talk shit about me and how y'all be talking so much shit and they be on my page spending all that money, I be like, damn. It must suck to hate yourself because you can't even do this freely. Anyways, good day.